We keep talking about de-dollarization. The name explains the concept. You take the dollar from the global economy. But what comes after that? Ideally, other currencies grow in stature. Like a multipolar world, it becomes a multi-currency market. The Indian rupee is trying to do that. It's a heavyweight in most of South Asia, but beyond that, the rupee doesn't have much influence. The Indian rupee makes up just 1.6% of global trade. There is a growing chorus to expand that. Last year, the State Bank of India made the first pitch. It said, it's time to internationalize the rupee. Now, a panel of the Reserve Bank of India has done the same. It has given recommendations on how to internationalize the rupee. So let's look at three important questions. When does a currency become international? How can the rupee achieve it? And what are the challenges? An international currency is like a popular teenager in school. You're in high demand. Consider the US dollar or the euro. Most countries use these currencies to trade. They also hold them in their reserves. So demand is key. When your currency has widespread demand, you can say it's international. Question number two, how can the rupee achieve it? The RBI panel has suggested short-term and long-term policies. In the short term, the policy sounds quite simple. Use more rupees to trade. Maybe start with India's neighbors who already use the currency. Bhutan and Nepal use the rupee as a designated foreign currency. Sri Lanka did the same in 2022. So the idea is to use more rupees in regional trade. But the long-term solution is more complicated, like allowing Indian banks to open offshore branches or harmonizing India's tax regimes, or using the RTGS for international transactions. You may have heard of it, RTGS. It transfers money from one account to another in real time. But one policy suggestion stands out. Including the rupee in the Special Drawing Rights Basket, the SDR, Special Drawing Rights. Quick side note. The SDR is the reserve held by the International Monetary Fund. It's like backup money. The SDR is a basket of five currencies, the US dollar, the euro, the Chinese yuan, the Japanese yen, and the British pound. Now, the suggestion is to include the Indian rupee in this basket, the SDR basket. Many experts say this will be a long process. It's not something which can be done overnight, which brings us to the final question. What are the challenges? There are two major ones. One is India's small export footprint. Like I said, you have to be like that popular kid in school. Other countries must be demanding you. And why would they do that? If they wanted to buy your goods or services. Let me show you an example, a list. China makes up 12% of all global exports. The US makes up 10%, Germany 7 the UK 36 Now look at India, just 2.4% of global exports. If there is no demand for Indian goods, countries will not use the rupee. Simple as that. But there is some good news too. India's exports are on a good trajectory. They were worth $375 billion in the year 2010, $375 billion. This year, they're expected to reach $770 billion, so exports have doubled. Challenge number two is convertibility. What does that mean? When you travel abroad, you may convert some rupees into dollars. That's convertibility. But there are different levels to it. Some currencies are fully convertible. In that case, the government won't interfere in your business. You can convert large sums of money into another currency as much as you want. Typically, these are developed economies. Now, there is no official list of fully convertible currencies, but these four appear on all the lists. The dollar, the euro, the pound, the yen. They are all fully convertible. Others, like the Indian rupee and the Chinese yuan, are partially convertible, meaning there are exchange limits. You can't just convert massive sums as you wish. The government sets a limit on how much you can convert. And then there are currencies that are non-convertible, like the North Korean won. Now, if you notice, the fully convertible ones are international currencies. And why is that? Because they are easier to buy and sell. Why would anyone use a currency that is hard to exchange? There is talk of making the Indian rupee fully convertible, but it's a tricky decision. The central bank cannot control a fully convertible currency. It's up to the market then. Right now in India, the RBI intervenes to keep the rupee stable. If it becomes fully convertible, you cannot do that. Another problem is volatility. Easier to convert also means easier to move. Foreign investors could pull out capital in the blink of an eye. Such shocks could affect the Indian market. So economists are asking India to be patient, to first build the requisites for a fully convertible currency, like a bigger export base, a higher per capita income, a more equitable wealth distribution, and more financial market maturity. Simply put, 
This is a developed economy's game. India is learning the ropes right now. Rest assured, the rupee's time will come.